Okay, so we're about to head up this very short multi-pitch climb. So I've stacked my two ropes separately so they're not overlapping and there's clearly one end on the bottom and one end on the top. The end on the top is what I'm going to tie into. The ends on the bottom are what my partner's going to tie into so you guys can start tying into that rope. Make sure it goes to your tie-in points and not just through your belay loop. The ends that are on top for me, I'm going to rotate face toward the rock and see which rope is going to go on which side of my harness. So while I'm climbing, I can see that this sort of yellowish colored rope is going to be on my right and the blue colored rope is going to be on my left. So that's the way I'm going to tie in. You don't necessarily have to turn to face the rock to do that, but you want to imagine what orientation your body is going to be in while you climb to know where to put these ropes. Let's get there. There, this technique that I'm using is called parallel, and this is suitable for pitches that are relatively straight up and down, not much for traversing. And also, there, it's not ideal if it's a crack climb, because if you're climbing parallel with a crack climb and someone is jamming in the crack, and then another person climbing on the other rope falls, that rope that's under tension can come across the hands of the other person climbing that crack and cause injury or at least a lot of discomfort. So we have kind of a face climb that's relatively straight up here with a little bit of a chimney. So this works out well. Okay. I'm gonna just check, helmets are on, good. Harnesses are above the waist. Excellent, your knot looks good. Your knot looks good. You both have shoes on and you both are psyched. Yeah! Uh, yeah cool, <laughs> I've got all the clippity doodahs that I need and I have something to build an anchor um, and we all have something to rappel down with, correct? Right? Great. Great, awesome, so that's that. And from here, I can have either person put me on belay because I am tied in with both ropes as opposed to tying in with one rope and clipping in. So in this case, I'll choose the fatter rope and the person that's more similar to my weight, so I'll have Stefan give me a belay on this. Yep, looks good. And carabiner is locked, so then I'll start up. I'm gonna grab both ropes from below like this and treat them as one. And then I clip them both in like this, okay? When my partners come up, the first person, in this case, Stefan, to reach is going to take his rope out. So right now his rope, this yellowish colored rope, is toward the spine of the carabiner on this quick draw. So if I wanna be more intentional about this, then I can rotate the carabiner. So now when I clip Stefan's rope in, it's located closer to the gate of that carabiner. So he can more easily unclip it, his rope, and leave Liz's rope, which is the blue rope still in the carabiner while he continues to climb. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so I've just reached two bolts that serve as the anchor at the top of this pitch, and I'm placing my pre-equalized quad. I notice that it's not ideal, so I flip the quad around so that the point of equalization on this quad is going to point toward the direction my climbers are coming up, which is slightly to the right. Now I secure myself using a clove hitch. You'll notice I just do the clove hitch on one strand and then the other strand I just drop in there and that helps keep my ropes organized. Lock that down and get myself comfortably cinched up. And now I need to load my ATC. I have an ATC guide here by Black Diamond and I want to orient it so that 
the face of the plate, which is the side opposite the wire, points toward the direction that my climbers are going to stay standing when I exit the next pitch. So this pitch leaves to the left, so my climbers are going to stand to the right, so the device is pointing to the right. And now I pull up the ropes, making sure I pull them up at the same rate. So both ropes are coming up together, and I make a very small, tall pile. And notice that pile is not directly underneath the plate, it's off to the side. This is called the clean stack, because the ropes were brought up together at the same rate. And now I load my ATC, push one side through, capture it with my finger, push the other side through, capture it with my finger, lock it in place with a locking carabiner. Okay, I check, yep. And now I'm gonna pull up the remainder of the slack until it comes tight on my guests. And you'll see there's clearly a spot underneath the device for the ropes to pile up when they're not paired. Here you can see that sloppy or dirty stack. That's where the ropes are not paired together evenly. When there's time, I will add the rope to the clean stack. I do not always do this. I will not do this if that's gonna result in slack accumulating for the climbers because it could be dangerous for them. But provided both of them are stopped and they're aware that I am moving the rope in this way and I don't see any barriers to the rope locking in the device, then I might do that while they climb. So Stefan has arrived at the belay, and I'll have him just put a backup knot in, just in case his rope gets disengaged by the other tensioned ropes in the system. And I keep belaying until Liz comes up. Now here you can see Stefan is positioned on the outside to my right, and then Liz is between Stefan and I. So we're going to call Stefan an outside climber, I'm an outside climber, and Liz is an inside climber. I finish adding the dirty stack to the clean stack, so it's all taken care of, and now I'm going to attach my followers. So first, I put a locking carabiner right beside the plate, and I identify the outside climber's rope. So there you can see Liz's shoes in the shot, so I'm finding Stefan, who is on the outside, and he has the yellow rope there. Feed in some slack for a clove hitch and put his clove hitch into a locking carabiner, the one that's immediately beside the plate. Okay, so he's locked in place now. So outside climber goes first. Now the inside climber is going to be attached. And the inside climber is Liz. So the inside climber's rope is going to go underneath the back side of the outside climber, climber's clove hitch. So that's the slack leg of the clove hitch. Here you can see I've demonstrated exactly how that's going to go. So outside climber attached first, then inside climber underneath the outside climber's slack strand in the clove hitch. Okay, outside climber has already been attached, inside climber underneath. and into the other shelf of the quad anchor. It's not essential you do that, but it adds a little bit of independent movement for the two. So they're each on a different shelf of the quad. Okay, so now they're both attached independently of the belay. So I can take apart the belay system, including taking out the backup knots. And you'll see by attaching them in that way, when I start to climb, because I'll be on the other end of the ropes I'm holding up here, those ropes will remain parallel and they're not crossed or twisted around each other. Last thing I need to do is make sure that this stack is entirely clean so the ropes have been matched and paired and I need to flip it so that my ends are on top again because I'm going to lead the next pitch. I'm also leading the next pitch in parallel which means using the exact same rope system and this transition is specifically for parallel to parallel which is the most efficient way to climb with two people and two ropes. Okay so now my end is on top. I'm going to place a quick draw 
in case I were to fall off this ledge on my way to the first piece of protection. Okay, I'm clipped in and now I'm going to be put on belay. I can be belayed by either person, but if there's a traverse to the left before I get my first piece in, then it's good to be belayed by the person who is to the left so that no tangent ropes fall across. Here I'm instructing Liz to re reconstruct her belay. She positioned it on the right hand side of tension ropes. I'm going to have her put it on the left hand side, which is just going to make sure that she has good brake control in the event I were to fall off here. Okay, I just passed her belay loop through her tie in point in order to give that a little bit more comfort. Okay, there we go. She checked her brake assisted device, in this case a Virgo, and it's working. I'm still through that quick draw. Both ropes have been paired and passed through that initial quick draw. And I forgot to grab that extra protection. So I'm grabbing the, the remaining quick draws and I'm gonna to check to make sure I have an anchor for the next pitch, which I do. And so here we go, I'm good, and I depart to the left, and I don't have to cross over either of my climbers. So here is a similar scenario from parallel to parallel, but I want to exit to the right, and my climbers are still coming up to the right. So I'll step over. So the ropes are on my left when I set up my belay. This is super important. I still organize my belay by attaching myself with the clove hitch. And I drop one non-clove hitched rope in. That way I only have to adjust one rope to tension myself. And then I put on my belay plate with the face of the plate facing toward the direction that the climbers are coming up the pitch. And now I stack my rope Again, I stack my rope out of the way of the plate in a clean stack. And now I load the plate, making sure that when I load the plate, again, the ropes are coming across the left hip. So everything is set up properly. That's gonna make it easy for me to depart to the right without having to step over people and without crosses. Now, once the whole system is set up, I can stand wherever I want. It doesn't really matter, but it's important that the whole system gets set up with those ropes on my left. Okay, and now I continue to belay, and I tell my followers where to stand when they arrive, and now I wanna make sure I'm standing to the right, so well, Stefan is still a little bit low on the pitch, I can step over his ropes and into the less comfortable belay spot. I tried to belay on the left for most of that pitch just because it was so uncomfortable here on the right. And now I have Stefan put in a backup knot. Okay, and I continue to belay Liz in. Now you'll notice that there's twists in the rope here, and this happens with some frequency, but you'll see it's not that much of an issue generally, as long as it doesn't interfere with your ability to belay. A few twists are fine. Okay, so both parties are anchored, backup knots are in. So just like before, I'm gonna put the outside person in, which again ends up being Stefan. He's standing on the outside. And I create the clove hitch past the twist. That's critical. I have to make the clove hitch past the twists if I want to get them out of the system. Okay, so now there are no twists between Stefan and his tie-in anchor, which is the clove hitch. And now I'm going to anchor Liz. Liz again is the middle climber, so she is going to go underneath the slack side of Stefan's clove hitch. So outside climber anchored, inside under. 
Some people remember this just saying outside, inside, under. Okay, inside climber. Their clove hitch goes underneath the backside of the outside climber's clove hitch. Okay, locked it down. There are no twists between either of the climbers and the carabiner that the clove hitch is on. And now they're both locked in so they can take apart the belay system. And once that belay system comes apart, you'll see those twists just disappear. There we go, I take out my belay device. I'm gonna check, there we go, the ropes are not twisted. Done everything correctly. And now we need to finish off with this rope. So I can either re reach over, or in this case, you know, I have very competent climbing partners here, and they know how to manage ropes quite well. So instead of getting in their business, I'm gonna let Stefan do some of the rope management, just instructing him to make sure to pair those ropes so he puts them into that stack at the same rate, not one going in 10 feet and the other five feet, but both 10 feet at a time. And now he's gonna flip the stack for me, making sure to flip so that my ropes do not end up captured underneath. They're both on the top. And now I'm popping Liz's belay loop through again, so it's coming out the right since I'm departing to the right. And now she's gonna put me on belay on the right hand side. Now it looks like there might be a cross or something here because where the stack of rope is, but as long as I've done everything correctly, there won't be any twists. And here, you know, the best ledge for the ropes is still over by Stefan, so he's in a position where he can manage the ropes. That's not always the case. Sometimes the best ledge just isn't in a position where one of the climbers can manage it that well. But here he's gonna help manage. I put the quick draw in and then I depart to the right and here I just want to show how well it pays out. So here comes the rope, the last little bit, as I'm pulling it up at the next belay. And when it comes tight to them, you'll notice there are no twists down near them. There's a twist above the quick draw, but that's inconsequential.